Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to discuss the fact that we are headed straight into a constitutional crisis. And what brings this video about is actually a ruling that came out overnight on the mainland, but it came from Hawaii. And this is essentially the Hawaii Supreme Court saying that the Second Amendment doesn't apply in their territory. And of course, you know, this is more of what we've seen from activist judges and really people being put in positions of power that are not qualified to be in positions of authority and the effects that it has upon the general populace. But what we're seeing here is really just a harbinger of things to come. And that is that these issues of state versus federal power, this is not something that as Jeff Sessions says was, was solved on the field of Gettysburg, far from it. This is an issue that is re-adjudicated, so to speak, in every generation and renegotiated. What we are at right now from a place in history is exactly where in particular the anti-federalist founding fathers, namely Richard Henry Lee uh, and others, they spoke about when a time when the federal government would become so large that it would be ineffective at sufficiently safeguarding the constitutional rights of those citizens in the states and effectively become the greatest single oppressor of those rights against the people in the states. So whether it's the issues with the border in Texas and the states having to assert their power against a federal government, or now with Hawaii, a state saying that, no, your, your Bill of Rights doesn't apply here. So whether this is an issue in Texas with the feds failing to protect the rights of Texas citizens, failing to safeguard their life, liberty, and property, and allowing an invasion en masse in Texas having to assert its constitutional authority to protect the rights of its people. Or now with Hawaii saying, nope, you don't have any rights here in Hawaii. Nope, your, your Bill of Rights doesn't apply here. We are in a full-blown constitutional crisis. And of course, it's at the time of the election coming up. I'm not particularly surprised by this. But when you consider that we had, to my knowledge, over a million contacts in the fiscal, this first part of the fiscal year alone of people crossing the border, this is unprecedented. We are being invaded and we are being invaded at a time when states are essentially having to, on the good side, in the, in the instance of Texas, when states are having to assert their rights to protect their people. And now on the flip side, you have Hawaii, like rogue leftist government saying, nope, you don't have a constitution here in Hawaii, not according to us. So we are going to see this issue play out over the next several months. And another facet of this is what happened in Colorado with the basically the Colorado Supreme Court attempting to keep uh, former President Donald Trump off of the ballot and then going to the Supreme Court and then having to strike it down. We are in a complete crisis right now. And this would be an issue in and of itself if there wasn't financial issues undergirding it. And because obviously our dollar is in an absolute free fall, we have inflation, I think, that is functionally pacing anywhere between 25 to 30 percent when you look at the purchasing power being absolutely depreciated over the past several years. Mm -hmm, I wonder why. You print money, you tell people stay at home, you get the government involved in every facet of their life and you tax them to pieces and then imagine that, the place just crumbles. We're going to be in some rough times and ultimately what it comes down to, Hawaii in this decision, which hopefully they're going to get their rear ends handed to them, but this is the thing, who's going to enforce this? Are they going to march federal troops into Hawaii to tell Hawaii to allow people to to carry their firearms? I seriously doubt it. Not under the Biden administration. Are there are what mechanism is there for enforcement? And frankly, if anybody had a a bone to pick with the federal government, it'd be the state of Hawaii. Particularly when you look at the history of um, of how it was brought into the union, it's, it's pretty dicey. But nonetheless, regardless of the history that brought us to this point. An individual who is paying federal taxes is owed his constitutional rights being defended. And if his constitutional rights are not being defended, then he has recourse in one way, shape, or form at multiple layers of government. And ultimately, when all appeals fail, there is an appeal to heaven. And that's it. We are at the appeal to heaven stage right now. We have an ultimate failure of the federal government. They have gotten us dragged into God knows how many wars and conflicts. They want endless blank checks for funding more of their conflicts. While we have people here, almost 50% of Americans cannot afford housing, basic housing right now, and yet they're bringing in millions of illegals, which we're paying for. When you think about it, when the courts are corrupt, 
when the federal government's corrupt and when our tax dollars are being extorted from us to be able to outcompete us for housing, for jobs, for food, for basic securities, there is no incentive whatsoever to comply with them. And even Chip Roy, actually Representative Chip Roy from Texas, was on the floor of the House of Representatives and said the, basically the exact thing. What incentive does any Texan have to pay federal income tax? And as a matter of fact, what incentive does any American have to pay federal income tax when the feds are the ones who are destroying their quality of life, who are taking their rights away, and who are ultimately stealing their property? It has become worse than the beast that we threw off in 1776. Far, far worse. And so ultimately, how do we prepare for this? Well, we prepare for this by going back to the ancient path, and that is learning the lessons from the past. We must be able to secure and defend ourselves. And part of that is, unfortunately, exactly what the state of Hawaii wants to try and take away from her citizens. The ability to keep and bear arms is a right that shall not be infringed. No other right in the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, has such strongly coded language of defense, shall not be infringed. And yet, it seems to be the one that's probably the most under attack, although you could say that definitely the the uh, Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, and First Amendment are also pretty heavily under attack. But when it comes right down to it, if we don't have the ability to secure our perimeter, if we don't have the ability to defend ourselves, we have nothing. If you can't feed yourself, then you're totally a slave of the state. You're completely at, at their mercy. And so that's where the beans portion is. You have beans, bullets, and band-aids. So the bullets, of course, is the Second Amendment. The beans portion is, obviously, to be able to have your food secure and have your water secure as part of that. But then the third point is the band-aids. Increasingly, they are going to use sickness as a way to herd people in and to force compliance upon them. We saw this with COVID, but it will not stop with COVID. Every facet that the federal government has its, its tentacles into, they're going to use this to try and control people, particularly in an election year. So pay attention to your basis. Let's double down on what we know to be true, the ancient path. It worked for our ancestors, it will work for us. Even if you don't have a perfect workable solution, you've got something that you can do in one of those three areas. Due to some of the issues that I'm seeing here on my end and due to the volume of emails that we've gotten begging for an in-person class, I am going to offer, Lord willing, before the election in late September, I'm going to offer a boot camp, which is all four days of medical prep and then three days of herbal theory and preparation with Patriot Nurse. So there's going to be one class that I offer this year, approximately 20 spots, and that's going to be in Knoxville, Tennessee. Details will be forthcoming, but that is the only option that you're going to have to train with me personally in person um, this year in the live training events. If you can't make that, then we have obviously training options online. I've got two courses online, a four hour and a seven hour one. The four hour one is the foundations of medical preparedness. And that one is $129. It's a great way to get started and to really dip your toe in and see how you like the online format and if it's a good fit for you. The next class that I offer is the herbal preparedness online course. And that one's a seven hour course, a little bit more time, higher price point. But if you're wanting to invest in yourself at a higher tier, that's where you want to go. And especially if you can't get to training with me in person, that's going to be your best option. But friends, we are standing on a cliff right now. And I don't think that our federal government is going to back up. It's going to go full speed ahead. And leftist state governments are going to continue charging. We are going to see, in my opinion, the beginnings of the formation of civil war here in the United States and ultimately World War III internationally. So best be prepared. Stay frosty. And stay prayed up because we know who wins at the end of things. My, all my confidence is in the Lord. It is not in man. It is definitely not in governments. It's not even in the United States government. My confidence is in the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. In him and him alone do I put my trust. Hope the video was helpful for you all. Have a very, very blessed day. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see you all later. Bye.